Hi. Now in this example, what we've got here is a hollow right circular cone of base radius A and height H. And it's fixed with its axis vertical and the vertex is downwards as shown here. And a particle moves with constant speed V in a horizontal circle of radius a third A on the smooth inner surface of the cone. And we've got to show that V equals the root of one third HG. So to do this, what I want to do is just put in this particle. Let's say the particle's here and it's moving around then in a circle on the inside of the cone, a horizontal circle. So in order to show this, let's just look at this section through here of the cone. If I just draw, say, that edge, something like this, we've got the particle on that inside surface. And it's moving round this circle here, which has got a radius of one third A. So that's our radius there. Now generally when you're doing questions like this, they involve looking at the forces acting on the particle and resolving vertically and horizontally into the centre of the circle. So if that's the case, we need to put some forces acting on this particle. Well, its mass is m, so therefore its weight will act downwards, and that will be mg newtons. There'll be a normal contact force from the surface of the cone, so I'll call that r newtons. And whenever you get a particle moving in a circle, there's always going to be an acceleration, which is going to act towards the center of that circle. So if I mark that acceleration there, because the particle is moving around with the speed of V, that acceleration here is given by V squared over the radius. The radius will just say R. Well, that's going to be a third A when we get to that part. Now, because we're going to be resolving vertically and horizontally, we need to put some angles in. So let's suppose that I call this angle in here theta. Then in this diagram, this will be the angle theta in here. But if I now move up to the particle here and draw a dotted line in there and the dotted line through there, then this angle in here will be theta as well. So when it comes to considering resolving, let's resolve vertically upwards first of all. Then what we've got is the component of R acting vertically is going to be R sine theta. So you've got R sine theta. Then you've got the weight acting downwards, so that's minus mg. And there's no acceleration in the vertical sense, so this is going to be equal to zero. Rearranging this, we can see from here that it follows that R sine theta must equal mg. And I'll call that equation one. And then what I need to do next is resolve in towards the center of the circle. So if I resolve horizontally to the left, I've got that the only force that's holding this in its circular path here is the component of the reaction off the surface of the cone. And that component is going to be R cosine theta. So you've got R cosine theta. That's the force is equal to the mass times the acceleration. And the acceleration is V squared over the radius. So I'll call that equation 2. And from these two equations, where we've got our sine and our cos, best way of solving these is to divide them. So if we do equation 1 divided by equation 2, let's see what that gives us. Well, the r's are going to cancel out. We've got sine theta over cosine theta, which is the tan of angle theta. And that's going to be equal to R 
G, the M's cancel, so you're going to get RG divided by V squared. But if we now work out what tan theta is, tan theta is from this diagram up here and this right angle triangle, tan theta is going to be A over H. So it follows that we've got A divided by H equals, and for the radius R, we know that's one third A, so we've got one third a times the g and that's divided by v squared. Okay, now we can rearrange this for v squared. Notice the a's will cancel out and so if we rearrange this we get v squared equals one third h times g and from this we can get v. v equals the square root then of all of one third h g and that's what we had to show. Okay well I hope that's given you some idea then how we go about solving a problem like this and a lot of these ones on horizontal circular motion will be by resolving vertically and horizontally in towards the center of the circle and building up your equations of motion as we've done here and then just solving them. Okay?